Welcome Wolf and Wolfettes to Let's Build a Zoo on the PlayStation 5 and I hope you guys and girls are having an absolutely fantastic day. Now I've been playing this game a little bit off camera, I think I've spent about two or three hours with this game so far and from what I've played this has been a fantastic game. It's basically like Zoo Tycoon with a absolutely stunning pixel art art style and then a bunch of other cool features such as the morality system that allows you to choose between a good or a bad zoo and also the splicing machine that allows you to create crazy animal hybrids such as a wolf and a giraffe stuck together so on and so forth so it's a very fun game a very enjoyable game so I've decided to do a playthrough on YouTube and show this game off a little bit and maybe inspire you to buy the game yourself but what we're going to be doing in today's video is first things first we need to unlock sandbox mode and to do that you need to create an avatar and I think you need to name the zoo um, free zoo build if I remember correctly and then you will unlock sandbox mode but you have to go through the tutorial first and then once you reach the world map you will then be able to change zoos go to your sandbox zoo and then you will have everything unlocked without any research all animal variations will be available, all animals will be available. You can choose to have unlimited money or no unlimited money. And you can also choose whether your animals die of old age or whether they are immune to death. So uh, before we do all of that, what we need to do is we need to come over to settings because one thing you might notice when you play these tycoon type games, they've always got this very cool beat in the background. It's a lovely soundtrack, but the problem is it keeps looping over and over again. And after four hours of playing, you start wanting to blow your own brains out. So <laughs> I recommend you come over to music volume and you turn it down a little bit before you go absolutely insane. And I also recommend you come over to advanced and you also turn off the character emotes because as your zoo gets bigger and more and more guests start to visit your zoo, you're gonna end up having emotes popping up all over the place, angry faces, happy faces, hearts, money symbols, etc. And it becomes an absolute nightmare. So I recommend you turn off the character emotes as well. If you want to, you don't have to, of course. Right. Let's get into the action then. Sorry for that somewhat long intro, but there was a lot of things to talk about. But this video right here is going to be just me basically getting through the tutorial, explaining how the game works, and then uh, probably jumping into sandbox mode. And then in the next video, we're going to start building our very own zoo. And hopefully it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really going to try my best for the first time in one of these types of games to make like a, a zoo that looks stunning. Because normally when I play these games on YouTube, it doesn't look very stunning, it looks pretty terrible. So I'm gonna try my best to make it look like an actual zoo in real life. Maybe we'll try and make like Colchester Zoo. I think that's the closest zoo to me. <laughs> or London Zoo or something. Right, new game. Okay, so what you need to do to unlock sandbox mode, you pick a random avatar that you like. They all look somewhat similar, just different shades of skin. And then when you go onto your zoo name, you wanna write free, oh, it's already there for me, free zoo build. And if you've done it correctly, it should say cheats enabled. There you go, cheat enabled, lovely. And now we're just gonna press play. Okay, so this right here, this is gonna be the tutorial. This is gonna be your starting story zoo. And uh, this is where you're gonna be spending most of your time unlocking things, doing research, uh, unlocking new variations of animals and stuff like that. But obviously if you've entered in that code, you can go to a different zoo where everything is already unlocked. But this is how you play the game properly, but we won't be doing that except for today's video. <laughs> okay, Kathleen Investor, new task, visit the management office. Hey there, my name is Kathleen and I'm currently your zoo's sole investor. Could you come down to the management office for a quick chat, please? No, I can't Kathleen, I'm a very busy man. <laughs> All right. Move around with the uh, left analog stick. L2 brings up your tall wheel with all of your different stuff. And uh, X is to select things, obviously. There we go. Lovely. And this is going to be where we get all of our tasks. Now, when you go to the sandbox zoo, you're not going to have to worry about any tasks. If I, if I remember correctly, you don't get any or you get barely any. So we're only going to have to worry about tasks in this video so that we can finish the tutorial. Okay. Build an enclosure. Every zoo needs animals, but before you can take a delivery of any animals, you need to build an enclosure. Okay. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an enclosure. Actually, first things first, um, 
Let me see if it will allow me. Nope, it's not going to let me. I was going to see if I could build a path first, but nope, it's not going to let me. So we're going to build a uh, grass enclosure. You might want to build one of these concrete enclosures just to have as like an area where you can have your animals delivered and then you can move them from that enclosure into their correct habitat after. But basically every animal you're going to get during the start of this uh, tutorial is going to be uh, grassy enclosures. So we might as well just build one of these straight away. So we're going to build this. We're just going to build it over here. We're not going to be spending much time in this place anyway. Going to make it somewhat big. Give them a bit of space. Lovely jubbly. And then as always, make sure you put the uh, gate somewhere where the uh, zookeepers can get to so they can fill up the water basin and also feed your animals. Lovely. Good day, I have a gift for you. Visit me in my zoo and I can tell you all about it. Just find the Australian zoo on the world map. Oh, sweet. Oh, can I? Oh, can I go to my sandbox mode now? Oh no, we can't go there yet. All right, so we can get two rabbits, and as you can see, they're a boy and girl, so they will be able to breed. Now, when it comes to animals in this game, uh, you could do lots of stuff. You can breed them, you could put them in a splicing machine to combine them with another animal. You can also abort the babies, which is uh, pretty fucking mean, actually. <laughs> and you can also, um, uh, what's your, oh, you can also um, give your bunnies contraception so they don't have babies no more and stuff like that. So you know how rabbits breed, breeding like rabbits, you know. So it's probably a good idea to do that to some of your animals, but especially rabbits, because they don't stop shagging. <laughs> Lovely. But um, as your rabbits breed and stuff, that's how, that's how you unlock variations of other animal, uh, other like rabbits, so you get all different color rabbits. And then when you come onto the world, world map, somebody might be asking you, for a, uh, a specific rabbit and it has to be that variation of rabbit so you might need to breed certain rabbits together to get a certain color in the breeding uh, laboratory or whatever it's called and that's how you'll get the right variation that you need to trade for other animals and stuff like that this is things we won't have to worry about in sandbox mode but I'm just explaining it for any of you that have just got the game and you want to play it the legitimate way it's probably time to start trying to earn a living let's open the zoo so paying customers can start turning up. Well, why would they want to turn up? I've got, I've got a couple of rabbits in a field. <laughs> well, why the fuck would they want to visit this zoo? <laughs> I've got rabbits in my house. Well, should I open my front door now and start charging people to see honey? <laughs> Lovely jubbly. Meep. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, can I... Uh... There we go, we can start building some stuff now. Obviously, I'm not going to focus on doing anything uh, amazing in this place because we're going to be leaving this place very soon. Let's just get a, a couple of paths set up. And also, I'll put another little one over there for the other enclosure. Extend this up here a little bit. Actually, extend it quite quite far up. And maybe maybe make this area a little bit, a little bit bigger, you know? This could be where we put all of our like facilities and stuff. But we just need to wait for tasks to pop up, finish the tasks, and then when we do that, uh, eventually we'll go back to the world map and we will be able to uh, go to Sandbox Island. But for now, we just have to deal with this. But I will explain things a lot more thoroughly in the next video as we're building our main zoo. And I will explain my plans on how I'm going to do things in that. Alright, let's move this water pump down here. Lovely. The water pumps are uh, where your sh uh, sh your uh, zookeepers can get water from to fill up the uh, to fill up the um, water basins in the enclosure. Right. So we're going to come on add object enrichment. We're going to get a small little bowl for the um, rabbits to play with. Don't think I've ever seen. Actually, no. Honey's got a ball inside of her hutch that she plays with. It's basically a ball that uh, you can open up and fill it full of treats. <laughs> So honey loves that, so I guess rabbits do like balls, giggity. Um, water, we'll get like a normal little water basin because that's all I can get at the moment. Make sure you put it somewhere near the door because um, as you build the enclosure and you put lots of stuff in there for the animals, uh, it might make it a bit harder for the zookeeper to get to the water basin. So I recommend you put it somewhere near the gate so they can always get to it. Otherwise you're going to start getting collision messages and the game's going to start screaming at you. All right, we don't have any shelters yet, so if it starts raining, the bunnies are just going to have to firm it. 
Uh, let's get some. Let's get some long grass. We all know the rabbits love long grass. Honey loves long grass. If I don't cut the grass for a few days, or for a few weeks in the summer when grass grows really quick in the summer, uh, Honey loves it. She goes out there and just dive bombs into the grass. <laughs> Oh, what is it that rabbits like to eat? I think they like eating dandelions, didn't they? Oh, it's a shame we can't get some dandelions. Rabbits love dandelions. Honey loves munching on them. Always a problem when there's a bee sitting on one and she goes over to try and start munching on it. <laughs> Let's get a couple of flowers in here. I'm sure the, uh, I'm sure the uh, rabbits will appreciate it. They can nibble on the petals. And also it increases the beauty of my, uh, of my zoo as well. There you go, look at that. That looks pretty nice. I don't think I like those tulips in there though. They don't really fit, do they? And we can't do any water decorations yet and we can't make any kind of pond yet. That's a shame. All right, what we gotta do? Build a research building. Oh, I'm completely ignoring the tasks. The main thing we need to be doing. <laughs> Okay, we need to hire a uh, researcher. I always increase their salary a little tiny bit like this, just to keep them happy for a while. And also the market rate does change over time and you've got to adjust it. And I think also depending on uh, their like skills and stuff, as you can see their work ethic is fucking red. So they basically don't like to work. They're a lazy piece of shit. So I've, I wouldn't even hire this guy uh, in real life, but you know, I can't, I can't, I've got no choice at the moment. But um, you can apply this uh, this salary to all employees. It doesn't really matter for a researcher because you're not going to employ many. But when you're hiring things like shopkeepers and stuff and uh, zookeepers, you want to apply it, apply this to all employee types. So you ain't got to keep adjusting the bar. But when we go to our sandbox zoo, I'm going to put this on max anyway because I'll have unlimited money. <laughs> Oh, and also the game saves every time the day ends. So don't turn the game off before the day ends, otherwise you'll lose whatever you did during that day in progress. Okay, we need to get 25 visitors. Oh, we need to build a storeroom. That's going to be where we get our... Uh... Yep, that's going to be where we get our animals. We get our uh, feed for our animals. Make sure you pay attention to the... Um... To your uh, storeroom because uh, the food does run out eventually and you need to refill it with food so if you forget about it animals will start starving and then people will get annoyed with you rightfully so of course right, let's move this somewhere else let's move this let's whack it there but i'll probably go into depth about things a bit more in the uh in the next episode. Just about how things work when we're building our uh, very own sandbox zoo. For now, I'm just trying to get through the uh, tasks. Right. Here we go. So uh, this is the research um, hub. And as you can see, there's a lot of things you can unlock. Um, it, as, as the day goes by, you'll get points at the top. You'll see them on the top of your uh, screen. You'll get um, research points as just as the, as the days go by. And uh, depending on what you want to buy, it will cost more research points. I think you can upgrade the research uh, center at some point, and you can have two researchers in there. And I think it generates more research points like per day, so that might be something to aim for. But uh, you aim towards certain things, and you can you can get all sorts. Of, there's there's hundreds of things you can unlock. It's crazy. But we'll, we'll grab the desert enclosure because we're probably going to need that at some point. As you can see, look, a lot of things just opened up. Uh, we'll grab the benches as well, because people like to sit down. We'll grab the... Uh... Oh, no, we won't grab anything else. We uh, ain't got any points left. <laughs> okay. Oh, my welfare report was a C. That's not good. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. Hire a janitor from the ticket office. Okay. Now, when it comes to hiring staff in this game, you basically open up job applications like you would in real life. So you'll come onto, uh, onto uh, this is the list of janitors that you already have. Or you come over here to hire a janitor and you press X to recruit and then you open up job applications and then you can start, um, 
you can you can do uh, advertising in different ways. So you can do it on social media and also on like job portals, and then uh, you can have more people apply for the job. And also, I think better quality people as well with like more star rating and stuff like that. And then we go on apply changes, and then we just have to wait for a janitor to apply for the job. I mean, if you want a cleaner, I'm a cleaner. I can come work at a zoo. If any zoos out there need a cleaner, hit me up, you know. Let me know. British Wolf. 18 at yahoo.com. That's my YouTube email. Hit me up, let me know, and I'll, I'll come clean your zoo. I don't care, as long as I get to stroke them as well. <laughs> I want to stroke a lion. If I lose my arm, it's worth it. Look, you, look at you, you let's shut up, you moany old git. You've got, you got two adorable little bunnies to look at with some gorgeous flowers. You moany old git. <laughs> Suppose he is an old man. He's seen everything in life. He's just become very, very angry now. He's bored because he's done everything. That's got to be the problem when you become old. You've just done everything. There's nothing left to do. That's the good thing about being a gamer. When you become like 90 years old, it's still a brand new game coming out. So you never get bored of gaming. So something you old people should get into. Start doing some gaming. Oh, we've also had 25 visitors as well. Because bunnies are the most flipping, adorable things on the planet. So uh, everybody wants to come and see them. <laughs> Look at everybody walking on the flipping sand. They're walking slow because there ain't no path there. And it uses more energy. Even the old bloke took about four years to get off of the uh, sand. <laughs> Lovely. Can I go to the world map now then? Oh, hang on. Oh, we could do it now. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll wait until the end of this video, then we'll go to sandbox mode. Okay, we'll do it at the end of this video. As you can see though, we can rescue a bunch of different animals and right there we can rescue a pig. Oh, sweet. Because you've got You've got animals you can rescue and then you have to pay for them. Or if you press L1 and R1, you see right here, this guy right here will trade me two hyenas for a snake. I don't know what kind of snake because we don't have any snakes yet. It might be the normal generic green snake or it might be a snake variation. You come over here, as you can see, we can get two geese, but we need to trade a rabbit. Now, we've got rabbits, but it's still blacked out, so we probably don't have the correct rabbit. So if I go on view trade, yep. See, required for the trade, I don't, we ain't got the right rabbit, see? So we need a different kind of colour. It says down there we need this one right here, which I think is like the speckled, uh, or the, I think that might be the brown rabbit. But you see, things like that. But we're going to stick in the tutorial zoo for now, just so we can you can see how the game actually works, you know? Right, let's have a look if we've got any... Yep, we've got one applicant. It's probably going to be someone's shit, but we'll just grab them for now. Yeah, we'll just grab them. It's only for the tutorial anyway. <clears throat> And we've closed the position, so no more uh, people can be recruited. Right. Nah. Let's go on park staff. Let's click on the janitor. And we're going to create a zone for him. So this will be the area that your janitor needs to clean. But I don't think the janitors clean up your uh, enclosures. I think the zookeepers do that. But we're going to set his area for here. Lovely. Lovely. And his name is Boris. Man, Boris Johnson's really been downgraded since he left Downing Street. Poor guy's become a janitor. <laughs> Poor guy. But if you want to speed up the time, uh, you can press R2 and you can speed up the time. See? All the way to triple, triple uh, speed. And then you can also pause it as well. Oh, this right here is like a morality choice. See? A lost puppy. Dress it, um, what is it? Lost puppy. Okay, how do I read it? Oh, there we go. The animal keeper told me that we have found a lost dog, a beautiful Labrador. We could call the number on its collar and tell its owner, or we can use this as an opportunity to earn more money and expand this fledgling zoo. Why don't we dress the dog up as a lion and use it to amaze your visitors? Now, obviously, you do that, it's naughty, because it's not a fucking lion, is it? So you're tricking people out of their hard-earned money. But if you choose to do that, you're going to have bad, negative uh, consequences, and you're going to start leaning your zoo towards bad. Or you can call the flipping owner and spend £50 to hold an advertising campaign to find its owner. Not sure why you'd have to do that if there's a number on the collar, but never mind. But uh, obviously we have to spend $50, but we're a good zoo. Now we're going to do that because we are not evil and Kathleen is a bad influence on us. 
Lovely. There you go. Your choices matter. The morality choices you make will impact the buildings and actions you can use and may be reflected in certain people's behaviours. Choose wisely. Yeah, because if you start building a bad zoo, you could do some horrible shit, like really horrible shit. Like recycle water, reuse like piss water and shit water and other things like that and stuff like that. Or you could be good and build like a water tower to harvest water. And then you obviously, you know, I'll explain all of this more in the next video, but there's so much stuff. <laughs> But you could also pause the game as well if you press R2. If you, if you need to, you know, catch up and you're becoming a bit overwhelmed, you can press R2. Okay, right. I suppose what we should do, actually, is get ourselves a hot dog shop. Oops. Helps if I press the right button. Press triangle to rotate it. Want people to have a bit of food. There we go. And then we're going to get ourselves a couple of cola vendors. And we're also going to grab a bin. At the moment, we have to use just normal bins because we don't have recycled bins yet, which uh, obviously sucks, but it is what it is. And then we're uh, going to grab a restroom over here. Just remember, this is just the uh, tutorial uh, zoo, so it doesn't really matter how it looks. I'm just getting all of the uh, n n the uh, necessities at the moment just to show you what you need to focus on. And then a water pump, as you can see, the zone is all the way over here, so we ain't got to worry about getting another water pump yet, but we can grab run one right here to extend the range a little bit. There you go. Lovely. Right. What do we want to do now? What do we want to grab? Oh, I need to get my reward from the uh, hiring a janitor. Lovely. So our now our objective is to have 100 visitors and to get five animals. Obviously, as the rabbits start breeding, you're going to get more and more uh, animals anyway. But what we're going to do is we are going to build another enclosure. We're going to grab ourselves another grass enclosure. And we're going to stick a few pigs in here. Obviously, I'm not building this properly. As you can see, I should be building it. Uh, further down over here because now we've got a bunch of unused space but I suppose I could stick a bunch of trees in here well maybe not because then you won't be able to see the animals but uh, obviously extend it down here but like I said it's not important at the moment we'll do all of this stuff properly once we go to sandbox mode right let's go on enrichment I'm going to try and get a pig in this one at the moment it's going to be a pretty naff zoo it's more like a petting zoo to be honest it's not going to be like a zoo with like lions and cool stuff like that. Just pigs and rabbits and random things like that. <laughs> Let's grab a water basin. The music in the background is very beautiful. It's just like after a while you do start to go a bit crazy. I don't know if pigs will play with balls like bunnies. <laughs> Egg giggity. But uh, we'll get a couple of balls anyway. I think there's only one pig available. So it's going to end up being a little bit lonely unfortunately. I don't know why pigs would like the grass. Well, I suppose they like mud, don't they? Is there anything that looks like mud? Should we stick a rock in there? I don't know if pigs want, pigs want rocks. Let's stick a couple of rocks in there. Once you've uh, spent more and more time researching, you have so many more options of things that you can put inside of your enclosures. You can make them look really beautiful. Like, you should see my uh, walrus enclosure off camera in my sandbox place. Oh! Oh, we had a baby! But you should see my, uh... Oh, look how, look how tiny it is! One minute, let me, uh... Is everything done in there? Yeah. Let me zoom in. Oh! Look at the little baby! Man, you can zoom in a lot. Right, let me, uh, let me speed up time quickly. Oh, there we go. It went all the way back to daytime instantly. It's already an adult. What happened? That was flipping quick. <laughs> God damn. Very nice. Actually, now we've got a brand rabbit, I think we can trade that for uh, something cool. Let's have a look. Or we could get two geese. But do I want to have such horrible, savage beasts inside of my zoo? That is the question. Do I want to have that? Because we all know geese are an absolute menace. I want to grab a pig. <laughs> oh, there's two pigs. 
and they're both female as well. The uh, that symbol is female, ain't it? I'm not being an idiot. I always get the bloody uh, male and female icon rot the wrong way around. I think that's female. Right, we're gonna we're gonna rescue both of these pigs. Lovely. Gonna have to wait a day for the delivery. All right, so we'll hang about for that delivery. Um, what do I want to build? What else do I want to grab? Probably get, grab a gift stand as well whilst I'm on it. There we go. Bloody employees. Imagine working for Beowulf the Wolf. You start, you start on your first day and I give you a pay rise. And you can also click on your staff members and give them a bonus as well. So that's good. Because certain employees are just great. I don't think you can rename your employees, which sucks ass. Because uh, I'd like to name some of my zookeepers after you guys and girls. Actually, thinking about it, have we got any zookeepers yet? I think you get one by default. Yeah, animal keeper. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on her and we're going to give her zones. And she's going to work on these two. It's, it's good to have like... If you've got a lot of money and you're bringing in a lot of money, it's good to have like... You know, have like maybe like one zookeeper only working on like two or three enclosures, then get another um, get another zookeeper and have them work on the other enclosures. Try and don't have one zookeeper working on too many enclosures because then you end up having animals not being fed or given water or cleaned up. You know, so don't have one zookeeper doing too much at once because it will become an absolute nightmare. Okay. Uh... Of course I could jump high, they're rabbits. I thought, the, I thought the rabbits were going to escape. I thought, oh shit, what have I done? Let's quickly do this before the piggies arrive. I thought I might as well, because I'm looking at all that space down there and it's actually driving me insane. And I'm sure it was probably driving you guys and girls insane as well. <laughs> there we go, lovely jubbly. And we've got a bit of open space to just have a walk around and then they've got like all of their greenery up here that they can jump around in and, you know, harass bumblebees and stuff. Okay, uh, I'm waiting for the pigs to arrive. And that's two pigs actually, so we're going to get that task done and 100 visitors will just come naturally. We're not making any profit at the moment, so that's not good. There is a new animal variant available in the shelter today. Oh, does that mean like on here? Oh, it is. Yeah, lovely. So when that message comes up, you might want to come and grab one of the new variants. Because sometimes just getting a new variant and breeding it with one of your current animals will allow you to get other, even more rarer variants, you know. But obviously, just remember, animals do die of old age in this game. What I normally do is when an animal is getting close to dying or somewhat near old age, I normally donate it to other zoos. And then uh, I have to pay to do that. But it's... Uh, then it allows me to get rid of animals if I've got too many of them and get rid of some of the older animals as well. Lovely. I'm not going to get any more bunnies though. We've already got three. I suppose what I could do is quickly uh, build. I've not got much time left, but I could build another enclosure quickly. There's a VIP in your zoo. Well, don't expect any flipping uh, special treatment you get. We don't. We don't give a damn if you're a VIP. <laughs> I don't give a shit, mate. Lovely. Let me just quickly come over to the uh, path, put some grey bricks, and then I'm going to stick another water pump over here just in case. Lovely. And this one will be 
for the uh, for the geese. Oh, the pigs are here. I didn't even see the helicopter. Man, I'm so flipping blind. Now, I know the uh, geese do love playing with a ball. What a terrible zoo we've got at the moment. <laughs> this is just obviously how the game is when it starts off. But just remember, if you write in that uh, cheat code and you go to sandbox mode, everything is unlocked. But this is the, this is the fun way of playing it because you, you work your way up, getting all of those variations, unlocking all of the buildings, you know, stuff like that. It's a lot more enjoyable to do it like that by far. But for a YouTube playthrough, obviously it's... Um, a lot more, uh, a lot more uh, fun to uh, have everything unlocked from the start, because then you can just focus on building the most beautiful zoo imaginable. There you go. This could be a little area where they can like lay their nest and lay eggs, even though they don't do that. But uh, this little area, they can do it. We could just pretend. Oh, we got a bit of profit today. It's a miracle. I'm not even looking at my money to be honest. Create work zones. I'm way ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you, mate. I like how you don't have to worry about... Uh, I keep pressing R2 by accident and speeding up time. I do apologise. I like how you don't have to worry about night time. When we uh, start playing in sandbox mode in the next video, um, we will have to... Uh... Right, let me trade my brown bunny. See you later, buddy. You take care of yourself, mate. But when uh, we do go to sandbox mode, we have to worry about night time, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. Now, what I want to do, actually, whilst I'm, uh, whilst I'm waiting, this video is going to... I think I'm going to be keeping these videos at about 30 minutes. I know my playthroughs lately have been like 40 minutes, but uh, I, will be, uh, I, I will be sticking to about 30 minutes with this game. And I might also be doing the Tomorrow Children as well. Basically, the rest of January is going to be a bit all over the place in terms of what I'm uploading. Just gonna paint all of this stuff in in grass as quick as possible. Because I don't like. I don't like how it looks with all this sand everywhere. You ain't gotta worry about spending money on grass as well, it's free. Just be careful you don't accidentally uh, go over your own paths. Should have done this before I even built anything. And I just proceeded to go over my uh, own path. <laughs> like an absolute flipping idiot. A little bit tedious to do. Just while I'm waiting for the geese to arrive, to be honest. It looks so much better with grass, doesn't it? They look a lot better. I know somebody in the comments might be like, Nah, V-Wolf, you fucked it up, mate. <laughs> I don't think I have. I think it looks stunning. I'll redo some of the other paths after. I don't know why everybody's running around on the grass anyway. I'm not sure what their beef is. Stick to the flipping pathways, you cock. I have to get a keep off the grass sign if they carry on. Right, is that everything? Yeah, right. Oh, no, I missed a spot over there. Lovely. Lovely. And boom. And boom. Right. There we go. How's that looking? Oh, we've had 100 visitors as well. Very nice. Oh, it wants me to buy some land now. Well, you think I'm made of money? Look at everybody waiting to go home. Right, let me wait for the geese to arrive. How long have I been recording? It says 44 minutes, but I will be honest with you, Wolf More Vets. My intro got well and truly ballsed up several times. I could not do the intro for this video for some reason. I think it's because I haven't recorded for two days. Like, I normally record um, five days a week, Monday to Friday. I record every day. I make either two or three videos, depending on the length of the videos. Um, but um, lately I've not been able to record because I finished Evil West. 
and I couldn't start recording this yet because I hadn't played it off camera. So this is one of those games where I need to at least know how things work before I start making videos on YouTube because otherwise, you know, the videos will just be an absolute nightmare. Is everything done all right? Yeah. So I've not been recording, so I think I was just a little bit out of practice. All right. Just gonna speed up time for my geese get here. Now we made 2,800. 2,008 year whatever profit then. Bloody hell. There we go. Here they come. Oh, beautiful. So at the moment, our park rating is 109. We've got 20 research points because I've not been bothering because I really need to. And our, mor our morality at the moment is on the good side and it's 5.43. But that could very easily go the other way if we did something stupid. Look at these little demons. Ready to start attacking all of the guests, are you? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I can already see you're a little troublemaker. I love how much you can zoom in. I can already see you two are little fucking troublemakers. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to press circle and I'm going to go on camera. I'm going to get myself a thumbnail. What do you think about that, Wolf Wolf What do you think of this zoo so far? Ah, oh, shit, I've spoiled it. One minute, one minute. I'm sure you all noticed that. If you didn't notice it, you're blind. There we go. Uh, make sure we don't have none of that again. Fucking hell, if people saw that in the thumbnail, they would most likely go absolutely insane. Probably dislike the video. And I probably wouldn't blame them. <laughs> I've got to remember that now, because now I'm going to accidentally take a picture of it. Uh, use it as the thumbnail, I mean. There we go. Alright, well. Thanks for watching, Wolf Morphets. Hopefully you've enjoyed this uh, first episode of Let's Build a Zoo. Hopefully I uh, explained stuff in this video that might be of use to you. But uh, next time, uh, we're going to go straight over to sandbox mode. And we're going to start, I'll probably discuss what I'm going to be doing, what my plan is in my mind. And uh, we'll start getting some stuff done. And I'll start explaining how things work in a bit more uh, detail, you know. and start Because we've got everything unlocked, it'll be a bit easier to explain certain things. But yeah, thanks for watching Warful Vets. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like, share. And join the pack today.